All right. So now let's look at the problem uh, section of this chapter. We have covered the theory. We have gone through variation, deviation, uh, uh, dip angles, uh, all those. Right. As I, as I told you in detail on depth of dip angle and stuff. So we will talk about that in the instrument part of navigation. We'll talk about the pendulum suspension, map compositors, all those things. We'll talk over there. Right. Now uh, you can write a question. Given. Given. True heading. Is 100 degrees. Variation. Twenty five degrees west. Deviation. Ten degrees west. Fight. Magnetic heading. All right. So you're given your true heading, which you get from your from your chart. So you you measure your track, and you got the and you applied the wind and stuff, and you get the true heading. That's hundred degrees. Variation is twenty five degrees west. Deviation is given as ten degrees west. We asked to find out magnetic heading and compass heading. Now. If I want to find magnetic heading, then we'll go look at the overall question first and then we'll go to the sum part of it. If I want to get magnetic heading from two true heading, I have to apply variation, as simple as that. And if I want to get compass heading, I now need to first find out magnetic heading, which I find out now using heading and variation. And once I get the magnetic heading, I apply the deviation and then I get the uh, compass heading. Right? Perfect. So just that small basic chart here. If you have the uh, heading true, I can apply variation and I will be getting heading magnetic and then if I apply deviation, deviation heading compass heading compass and that goes other way around as well. If I have heading compass, you apply deviation heading magnetic and then you get so yeah. there is an easier method to do this, these kind of questions. Are you aware of that? Right? We we'll, we we'll talk about the uh, second. Yeah, like no. Uh, no. So we we'll talk about the uh, the grass root level. We'll see how this is happening using the normal diagrams you have drawn, and then we'll talk about the uh, the quick way of doing it for your exams, right? But I'm not teaching you that way straight because that is a very simple, very convincing way that once if you learn that you'll always use it. And if you don't really know the basics, which you know now because you've gone through a theory. Otherwise, what happens if someone puts this equation straight? than explaining this then you will get so used to the equation that you will not have the background story in your head let's you know the same thing you are explaining this but let's see the same thing with respect to this particular question so what we have is what we are going to draw here first what we have is the is the true heading true heading is reference to the true north right and we know what a symbol of true north is yeah why this is diamond shape something that's right true north We don't have to mark two not there because this inter indicates two not. So the, to start with, I'll mark two not there. And what are the heading? Heading is 100 degrees. How will you measure this? From your true north, you have to measure clockwise 100 degrees. So take your protractor and measure, and then you will get 100 degrees. And that is the heading, which means I'm drawing the aircraft here. Right? What is the heading? What is the meaning of heading? The direction in which the nose of the aircraft is. That's right. Heading, when you think about heading, always think about the nose of the aircraft. With respect to the north. So the nose of the aircraft with respect to true north is what is the true heading. Right? So how do you measure that? Clockwise. Clockwise from the true north. Yes. And how much is that? 100 degrees. 100 degrees, true. Right? Now, what are you asked to find out? You are asked to find out the magnetic uh, heading for which we have the variation 25 degrees west. Now, what is the meaning of 25 degrees west variation? Magnetic north, magnetic north is to the is west of true north. 
that's right, is to the west of true north, right? So true north is here, west is to your left, therefore magnetic north is to the left or west of the true north and this is how we represent it, right? Now measuring from, magnet, uh, from true north towards magnetic north, that angle is what is called as variation, variation. right? And how much is the variation? 25 degrees west. That's right. So let me just draw a bit more wider angle. West. Yes. Make sense? Now you're asked to find out your magnetic heading. Now how would you find that? Yeah. Magnetic heading From is... From magnetic pole to nose. That's right. right. From the magnetic north, measure clockwise towards the heading. Therefore, to the nose of the aircraft. Right? And from this figure, it is pretty clear that it is a sum of your true heading and your variation of 25 degrees west. Therefore, how much is that? It's 125. 125 degrees west. Right? That's not 125 degrees. Magnetic. Magnetic. Now, that holds to a mnemonics where you have westerly variation. When the variation is west, your magnetic is best. Magnetic is more. Right? Make sense? So we can see here, if you have the true heading, which is yeah. 100 degrees here, and if you have the variation, how much? 25 degrees west, west, I can find out the magnetic heading, which is 100 plus 25, 125 degrees magnetic. That's because if you have a westerly variation, if you are given the true heading, you have to add it to true, true heading to get it where 125 because westerly variation, magnetic has to be best. If it was easterly variation, to get this magnetic, you should subtract 25 from 100. 100 minus 25. Make sense? Yes. Now, the next question. So, what is the answer here? First is the magnetic heading. 125 degree magnetic. 125 degree magnetic. You understood this from the figure? Why is it like that? Yes. Perfect. Now, remember, if I look at the same figure from the other side, my variation is going to be 25 degrees east. So we studied that the variation depends upon the relative position of the observer with the true north-south pole. So it is not fixed, it changes, right? So it can change. Now, uh, compass heading. To find the compass heading, you have the reference for compass heading is compass north. So we have to yeah. mark the compass north, right? Uh, to mark the compass dot, we have the deviation given, which is 10 degrees west. Now, what is the meaning of deviation being 10 degrees west? It means that the compass north is west of the magnetic north. That's very good. Compass north is to the west of magnetic north. This is These are certain things which confuse people, like, is it magnetic north west of compass north? Or is compass not west of true north? Such kind of confusions will be there. So I always think variation means I need true north. Unfortunately, what I can fly is only magnetic. Therefore, reference is true north. Deviation means an error which is happening to what I want, which is magnetic value. Therefore, magnetic north is reference. So the compass north uh, is the west of magnetic north. With respect to magnetic north, we, we find where the compass north is. So where is the compass north? 10 degrees to the west of magnetic north. So magnetic north is here, which is 25 degrees. Therefore, 10 degrees to the west of it means. Yeah, I should have drawn it a bit less. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Make sense? Magnetic yeah. north and compass north is to the left of it. Measuring from the magnetic north towards the compass north is what is called as deviation, and that deviation is given as 10 degrees. 10 degrees west. Right. Now. Uh, how will you measure magnetic uh, compass heading from the compass north over here clockwise all the way to your heading yeah. right now you can see that your magnetic don't reference to true north at all here because it is deviation it's the business between magnetic and compass north so magnetic north you can see this blue line over here it is 125 yeah. and now you have an additional 10 degrees west here so it's 125 plus 10 which is 10, 35 compass. degrees compass right and that goes in line with our mnemonics if we have westerly deviation your compass is going to be the best out of magnetic and compass the compass is going to be the best 
right? So if I have the magnetic value, and if they give you deviation, the question, the deviation, the question here is. Is the best. How will you find the compass? Westerly deviation means yeah. compass has to be the best or higher, yes. which means I have to add. 125 plus 10, 125. Okay. It's 35 degrees. Remember, since deviation is an error, sometimes in the questions, instead of 10 degrees west, they can give you minus 10 degrees. And you can see I have to apply that minus 10 degrees to my compass heading in order to get my magnetic heading. If you're confused with this, whenever you get minus, simply convert that to west and then do it normally. If you get plus, simply convert that to east and then do it normally. Right? If it was 10 degrees east, then the compass has to be least and therefore you have to take that 10 off from 125 and you will get 115 here. Right? And this is the technique that uh, generally follow and I recommend you to follow this for the exams that you can actually make a column, a table in this order. The order is called CDMVT. Uh, compass heading, deviation, magnetic heading, variation, and true heading. Now, even if without drawing this figure, you fill up what is already given. So, this question true is given, variation is given, deviation is given. And just by looking at the variation add and subtract, you can fill it up. So, you get the answer like in 10 yeah. seconds. But this is how it's actually happening. Okay. Right? 